Hello and welcome people to Server Client 101. Today, before we start with everything else, I will explain you general networking terms. Terms you should have heard. One thing you have to keep in mind is that this will be just a crash course. So this is nothing, you know, in detail. It's just going over some things that you actually understand what I mean. Good. So first, let's view on an internet protocol, TCP IP properties window of Windows. On Mac OS X and any other OS, it looks almost the same. And here are some words, some terms you may not have, you may not have heard, like IP addresses, subnet masks, default gateways, or DNS servers. So I will explain them to you. Basically, before I start, the Internet Protocol is just a way that computers, um, better said, the network cards of computers communicate with each other. And now let's discuss the IP address. It's one very important part of this protocol. So an IP address is like a, it's like a telephone number it is assigned to one PC only. So if you have an IP address, it's unique. It's unique to one PC in the network. And there may not be two PCs with the same IP address because that just doesn't work, okay? And the range basically from those numbers you see here goes from 0 to 255 in the IP version 4 protocol which we still use. There is one um, in, uh, there is one that is going to replace this protocol IP version 6 it's called but currently it's not really released. I mean it's done since like I guess 2003 but we still use IP version 4 because it's much more simplistic and much easier. So don't worry, this is like the latest standard that we actually use in our today's life. So I will later on go over IP version 6 because IP version 4 will be outdated sometimes. Maybe not this year, maybe not next, but maybe 2014. So I will go over that later on and I will just explain you for now on how IP version 4 is managed. So basically you see these four numbers of groups. So you see these four groups of numbers. That's what I want to say. And each number in here could go up to 255 from 0 on. So you could have an IP address 0.0.0.0. .0. Good. As I said, the IP address is unique assigned to one PC. Okay, so there's Another thing you, that you should know about, I narrate this afterwards, having the presentation with you, so it can be a little messed up. If you look closely to those four rows of digits, four rows of numbers, four groups of numbers, as I told you like some seconds ago, basically the three uh, first blocks, if you look up from the left, I will marquee this from you for you so you can see that so the three first groups of numbers are the network which you're in and the last group is for the PC in the network so like you could have a network 192.168.1 and then your computer has a number assigned to it like in my case in my home case the network is 192.168.1. And my PC is 2, my home server is 3, and my router is 1 because it's releasing the IP addresses for everything else. But well, enjoy the rest of the video. <laughs> then we have the subnet. The subnet is also divided into four groups of numbers, and basically, if you think in roads, um, one lane is one subnet in this example, and you have house 470 in lane 1, but this is not the same as if you had also a house 470 in lane 2. You know what I mean? There are two different lanes. 
So if you have one IP address on the subnet mask that is shown in the picture, and you go one digit up, so you say 249 instead of 248 at the end, it's a complete different thing, and the computers cannot communicate with each other, which, with each other because it's something completely different. That's what you have to understand, basically. So basically, this is a way to keep networks apart, I guess. It's the best way to explain it. And yeah, that's all we need to know about that. If you have co many computers in your network, the subnet on every computer has to be the same. Now we come to the default gateway. The default gateway is basically a node to another network. For example, it connects you with the internet and many times this is the router, your modem, your DSL modem, your DSL router, whatever you have, this thing acts as your gateway to the internet. It will, you know, connect your local network, connect to the internet. So it will connect your local network to the internet to the global worldwide internet. Good. So basically it's just a node to another network. Then we have the DNS server. The DNS server is therefore that humans cannot remember numbers that good, better they can remember names. So it resolves the addresses two different names. For example, google.com gets resolved to 173.194.69.105. Basically, you type in your browser google.com and press enter. The thing that happens is your browser calls the DNS server. The DNS server says, hey Google, what's your IP address? And it finds out that the IP address is this one. And then it will tell your browser, Hey, browser, this is the IP address of Google. The browser says, hey, thanks. And then it will basically just go to this IP address. So the names are just made up for us human. You know what I mean? Good. And that was basically it, the end. I know it is wrong spelling, but I wanted to spell it wrong. <laughs> and uh, I hope you had fun. If you did not understand something, just write me in the comments below and I will try to answer your questions as good as I can. So, that's it for now. Now you can continue with every other series on this channel that has to do with networking. If there's something different to explain, I will post another presentation about this. But this basically is the general stuff about networking. And it was a crash course. You can write about these things, books, with hundreds of pages, okay? So, okay, that's it. See you later. Bye.